My background is math mathematics, but I turned into computer science and I turned into human-computer interaction. Well, in human-computer inter interaction research, we now look at all kinds of modalities that are available in order to, well, help the user, support the user in using computers or being in sensor-equipped environments. So it's quite natural that brain-computer interfacing comes into the picture. So by looking at all these different modalities, by becoming aware of brain-computer interfacing, we embedded it in our research. We started with a Dutch project, a national Dutch project, Brain Gain, it was called. And uh, then we got, well, uh, familiar with things going on in brain-computer interfacing, especially in the Netherlands in the first uh, years, of course. And uh, I think the nice things I saw uh, had to do with uh, game-like applications. But they were not really games, they were just examples of how uh, well game elements could be done with BCI. So that was done by neuroscientists or maybe uh, more traditional brain-computer interface uh, scientists. And uh, I looked at these uh, applications, these game-like applications, and I thought, well, there's more possible than this. And there's more possible because, uh, well, we know a lot about computer science, about possibilities in artificial intelligence, and that was not really used in these applications. So that was for me the start to, well, look seriously into brain-computer interfacing and see whether it, can has, whether it can have other applications than just the med medical applications, which are important, of course, but not necessarily the only ones. Yes, we now see that there are toys uh, that are using uh, BCI. There are commercial companies interested in selling these kind of toys. Uh, there are companies who are selling uh, headsets and uh, developers kits so that people can uh, make their own applications for BCI. So maybe it's just as in the case of the first uh, personal computers, then we talked about garage computers, computers that were built into in uh, garages of uh, hobbyists. And maybe the same will happen with uh, brain-computer interfacing. Uh, so I expect that uh, young people interested in technology, inter interested in interaction technology, will start playing with it and, well, Maybe we cannot expect the same success as with uh, personal computers in the, in the, let's say, when was it, the 80s? Uh, yeah, the 80s, I think. But uh, that could be a start. And that means that, yeah, these are not the, the, the medical applications. They look at other applications. They look at game-like applications, applications they can use in their homes. So the domotics is becoming important, games are becoming important. So I think a lot of users will come from these areas. Possibility to have uh, different modalities uh, used at the same time, so in parallel, are used uh, sequential. Uh, that would be great because, uh, well, let's say regular users, uh, they are used at uh, moving around, they are used at using their voice, uh, using gestures, their head is moving. So making kind of integration of all these modalities uh, where BCI plays an important role, uh, that would be, uh, I think, the, the main thing we are, we are looking at and that, that will be the most important thing. So if you look at uh, computer science, uh, the things that are popular now, that are hot topics, uh, they deal with uh, context awareness, they deal with uh, personalization. Uh, it means that information coming from all kinds of resources have to come together, have to be integrated. So this fusion of different kinds of knowledge in order to support the user Making that possible, that's one of the aims of my research group, certainly. Well, one is what I just mentioned, uh, so the multimodal fusion. 
and embedding BCI in uh, computer science and artificial intelligence, uh, human computer interaction research. And uh, other one is if you look at applications, you need good designs, you need smart designs, and maybe designs that are different from designs that we have now. So BCI has some problems, of course. So uh, bandwidth, robustness, uh, reliability, etc. So can we find applications, and can we find, can we design applications in such a way that we can overcome these problems in a natural way for the user? So that's these are the important things, I think. BCI is becoming more and more integrated, will become more integrated into uh, computer science funding. So the ICT funding uh, should uh, uh, allow more BCI research, I think. In my research group, uh, computer science group, we are not looking at the invasive technology that would mean that we have to operate people. And uh, I don't think that's uh, in our profession, but uh, I can imagine that in the future it becomes easier or maybe very easy, uh, well, to have uh, invasive uh, technology. So I have no problem with uh, invasive uh, BCI. That's a question like, uh, what is computer science or what is a computer? Is what you're doing, is that software engineering or, or is that something else? Uh, just use all kinds of technology in order to help people, to support people in their work, in their recreational activities and things like that. And uh, okay, as, uh, if, if there is brain activity involved in what you're measuring and that plays a role in your application, then for me it's BCI or it's part of BCI or whatever you want to call it. We, we ourselves, our environments uh, will become more and more equipped with all kinds of uh, sensors. People will get used uh, to these sensors and I think that in the future, uh, maybe already know, now, they will also uh, allow these sensors uh, to be implanted in their uh, body. I don't think that will uh, be a problem in the future for people. You already now see that sometimes people have a chip in their upper arm just to uh, be able to enter a disco or things like that and uh, that will become, well, maybe uh, rather natural in the future.